<laughs> you too. <laughs> I'm so excited I'm falling out of my chair. <laughs> Where's Mitzi? Oh, she's roaming around the house. I'm a little boring to her right now. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, we are live streaming. And heads up, if at any point you look on your Facebook page, make sure you keep your Facebook page muted because the live stream on Facebook is a few, like 20 seconds behind uh, what you and I see. I'm actually not on Facebook right now. I'm just doing this with you. That works well. That works well. And um, I'll keep my eye on Facebook. So when people ask questions and stuff, Nazi is already with us. Hi, Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nazi. How are you? Should I turn on my Facebook, do you think? No, not necessarily. If you want to, six to one, half dozen, the other. Just make That's sure you right. keep it silent or. Yeah. No, I, I won't go on it. I'll just sure. let you stream it. So, um, and I want to thank you again for being part of the, the group last night when I channeled the librarians. I was so oh, I nervous. You did very much. You did very, very well. Yeah. You know, you are actually the cause of a very deep conversation I had with them because um, one time you mentioned uh, about the book, How Jesus Planned His Life, that I'm speaking his words, but you heard it with my voice mm -hmm. um, or something. And I was thinking, huh, because that's not really like when I read it, I read his voice. I don't really read mine. So I took up the library and I made Jesus meet me there. Uh, and I was talking with the librarians about what the heck is going on, you know? And they're like, yes, you are a very good student. You are learning well how to be a communicator. We are so proud that we've been teaching you so well that your voice is now coming into alignment with the divine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I am really... but it's so helpful, I... Cool, though i mean it was a comment about how e how much easier it is to understand what you say when you do channel them because yeah um otherwise it would you know one had to second guess and double double guess <laughs> you know just sort of yeah. like wonder what was that what was that you know sometimes channelings are like that exactly Exactly. And um, with the years of dedicated work, my voice, like I think of myself as maturing as we all do, but I didn't realize there were like little puppet masters pulling me closer and closer to them so I can just be an easy mouthpiece. Right. Last but night you a were a little thing. bit different. You were just a little bit different. So, I mean, it was still very succinct and very fluent, mm -hmm. but we could tell that you were channeling somebody because this, the way you were all of a sudden, like your body gesture changed and- Really? So yeah, the sort of the way you were saying things. So although it was your voice, it was mm -hmm. a bit altered. You know, your style was a bit altered. It just, your mannerisms were altered a little bit. So it was kind of interesting. See, I wouldn't know because normally they pull me as one with their collective and this time they kicked me out <laughs> so and I think I mentioned in the email I sent out I had my laptop with the live stream but Jean-Marie was not able to record the live stream because the zoom had her on as an, someone attending not right. as the host <laughs> which it, she said that never happened to her before and then I had three recording devices set up uh, one of them would not even record. The other one recorded, but then when I went to play it and it was there in MP4 format, it said, this is in an unknown format, it won't play. And then the third one, even though I could see it there, it would not even acknowledge there was anything there. That's why I emailed everyone, did anyone else have a copy? The energy was really strong. And I know that because one other time, um, and it was really strong. And I tell you why I say that, because I kept feeling like I'm about to doze off. And this has happened to me really? one other time in a, in a group, actually, with the book group. 
uh, we were doing the raw materials and we were supposed to watch this like a little short video on this lady channeling raw and it was only 20 minutes for the life of me minute 11 I was like comatose I mean no matter how many times I tried I just would just my eyes would be shut closed and I remember mentioned that and Kathy um Kathy says she was experiencing the same thing and Jean-Marie said it's because of the energy you're not used to you're you know it's so much that your body can't get used to it so I only have that as a reference. And this happened to me last night again. I mean, I fought it because I wanted to sit through what you had to say. But, you know, yeah. I just felt myself going like, and I wasn't sleepy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a surprise that your, um, your devices didn't work because it was really powerful. Right. Energetically, there was a lot going on. <laughs> 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 Thank you. And for those of you who are just tuning in, um, I'm here with Mariam Sardari. Hi, uh, <laughs> Last night, Mariam uh, was part of the group that I did a channeling of the Akashic Record librarians to. And um, I have a recording of it. I just posted it. I'm going to have to edit to add the title of what it is because that didn't um, hold on guys. There we go. So I just posted that in the comments so you can see that. Um, and so we have a fun double class tonight. On one side, we're going, I'm going to interview Mariam, who is a very, very dear friend of mine for many years now. We have worked together. We have studied together. I've studied with Mariam. Mariam has studied with me. Um, we have supported each other through our work and our growth. And um, Mariam is extraordinary with working with frequencies and receiving pure uh pure messages, pure energy. And I know she's worked really hard for years for this to happen because um, <laughs> we have been venting our frustration for years together as we were students <laughs> <laughs> side by side. Um, so tonight I'm going to ask Mariam um, and then afterwards we'll do some cards. We'll play with cards. But for now, I'm going to ask Mariam about her experience with three of the many modalities she is skilled with. There's three in particular. Mariam is a cosmic artist. She does these soul paintings. So just as I have an aura camera so I can photograph your energy and I can look at someone, I can see their past lives. Mariam can look at you and see your soul and make a beautiful painting artwork of what she sees. These are stunning works of art. And they're not like those, uh, oh, what are those drawings where you go in and they draw caricature artists? It's not like that, it's quick. This is a process for Maria of really integrating with your soul's energy and transforming it into a beautiful work of art. Can I just make a correction? Mm -hmm. they're, they're mainly angel paintings, but they are connected to the person that I do them for. Well, before we move on, why don't you talk to us about this? Because that's so interesting. <laughs> um, well, uh, for those who don't know, I have uh, in my background, I'm uh, as a background, I'm an art therapist. So um, being involved in making artwork has been a lifelong uh, love of mine. And I love the creative aspect of things. And um, I, several years ago, I decided to just for fun, sign up for this uh, painting class so that I would keep my creativity going. I had gone through um, a bit of depression and I kind of wanted to pep myself up a bit and get back into creative process. And I signed up for a class with this artist whose work I really love. It's very whimsical and that's the style I like. 
So I did this class and uh, it really, really resonated with me. I liked everything about it. And this lady also has a similar background to mine. She used to be a social worker and now she does this. So um, I connected with her on many levels. I did the class and I just really loved what I ended up doing. So uh, fast forwarding to a few years afterwards, I decided to just um, do this artwork just for fun and gifted to a couple of people I wanted to give a birthday gift to. And then I, my guides seem to be very pleased with this process. So they actually told me to open this up and to offer these uh, and put them up for commissions. So that's how it all came about. I do these um, angels or uh, I do them for commission and each is as Bonita mentioned, each is tuned to the person that they are meant for. The only thing I ask the person who wants them is give me color preference. And the rest it is a process. It takes me a little bit to actually do these. And I channel the messages that are specific for that person. And sometimes I get visitations while I'm doing that. And <laughs> so it makes it more interesting. That so is this. amazing. So. <laughs> Can you tell us like some of what it feels like for you or how you get the messages, how you get the visitations? Like what have your senses become uh, connected with all of this? Um, when I get into a flow, uh, I hear things. I'm very auditory. So the messages come. A few times I've actually felt presence in the room with me. And it was very, very specific, you know. Um, and obviously they had come for the person I was working for. So they made sure that I tell them something very specific as a message, not necessarily on the painting, but mm -hmm. as a communication, they wanted to deliver a message. And this has been either uh, from the archangels, I've had archangels come uh, dearly, departed ones, um, different kinds of uh, like masters. It depends on what I'm working with, but it's all, um, it has to do with what the person is connected to. So, um, and sometimes if, if they don't have a particular connection, I do get like an angelic presence that just comes through and I see light around mm -hmm. the piece. And then once I'm done, I always put a blessing on that, a specific blessing that I do <laughs> so that it's infused with light when it goes to the person who has it. Wow. And what sort of responses do you get from people when they see their, their pictures? <laughs> well, I'm grateful that people who have received them have really loved them. So, um, I'm, I'm very pleased. <laughs> uh, um, now, but that's not the only thing you do. You also are a life coach mm -hmm. and you come from your, your, your work as a life coach from a variety of background experience. You know, yes. I mean, of course, you've lived a lot of life. <laughs> you've certainly been <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you've had a very um, unusual life, I would say. You know, oh, you've, yeah, you've seen a few of them <laughs> you, for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're past Hold life. on to them for me. <laughs> yeah. But you also have a background as a therapist and an artist. And, um, your experience in a variety of um, healing formats. So what was it that came together that brought you as a life coach? You know, I, I mean, I see how everything comes together for that, but right. what, what, how did all that come together for you? Um, actually, it's, uh, it's interesting because a wonderful little thing called a depression 
<laughs> very major depression in my um, book. Um, that's um, so hard to imagine. Uh, yes, it's, as so you know me, it's not my personality to be depressive, but I did experience this period of depression in my life, which was after having been laid off and having gone into business um, artistic endeavor, as a matter of fact, which actually artistically was great, but um, not doing a lot of that during that time, I just became very depressed and I could feel that, that at that time I wasn't really in touch as much with my guides, but I was getting really clear indications that, okay, I've sort of veered off the path just a bit. And so I just went into this terrible depression where I could not function. And I was a young mom back then. I had a little girl and I just wasn't functional. And I figured this is not the way to do it. So uh, the business was folded and literally upon doing that, suddenly the universe opened up and I got very clear messages and coaching literally knocked on my door. And I was wondering like, mm. how have I not thought of that? Because I kind of did that for years as an art therapist. I mean, therapist coach too. So um, I set out to follow that and I did my certification and I absolutely love it. I mean, that's like, I just, I love coaching and I love doing the kind of coaching that I do because it's not a typical one, not to, you know, I don't mean to sound a little bit full of myself, but no, it's, <laughs> it's not a typical would. program, you know, it's a, it's got a spiritual bent and I actually just, um, I'm launching a new program, which is kind of a combination of things I've done, but mine has a spiritual bent to it. So it mm -hmm. makes it, um, a little bit different. It's for people who want to sort of uh, get to know themselves a little bit deeper. When I have talked with people who have worked with you, I have heard repeatedly the same compliment, which is you help support them as they figure out what is best for them that there's a lot of life coaches that tell you what to do or they direct you, but you created a blossoming within them that they felt was much more powerful than if you had just told them, okay, before we meet next week, I want you to, you know, look for a job or this or that, or like, you really worked from the inside going outward. So they're able to release everything that had been holding them back and go forward um in their own light and i've heard that you know even some of those phrases again and again and again that's good to hear i guess my therapist wants a therapist always <laughs> <that's> <laughs> sort of um holding the space is important um yes and i just want to say guys uh you all are posting asking see pictures of mariam's uh portraits i'm if I seem a little distracted, I'm going to dive into her Facebook page where I know you posted them, but Martin posts a lot of pictures. Oh, I so. can email a couple to you right now if you want. Okay. I have saved yeah. It and yeah, I'm going to send it to you. Yeah. If you are not friends with Mariam on Facebook, I totally recommend it. She does this one, aside from the fact that who wouldn't want to be friends with Mariam? She does this <laughs> wonderful thing where she posts joy pictures every day. And she posts inspirational messages every day. And they're like really short, but wow, my day is so much better because of Mariam's joy messages and inspirational quotes. They're good. They're always perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another thing while Mariam is emailing me pictures that I will upload is... Um, Mariam is a reconnective healing master. I don't know what is the proper title, but. Uh, uh, reconnective healing practitioner. You're so much more than just that. Well, they emphasize to call ourselves that, but you know, that's, uh, that, it's my offering. I'm a reconnective healing. So I will say this very humble lady uh, has 
spent plenty of time directly working with and studying with Eric Pearl and uh, Joan, I don't remember Joan's last name, uh, Fowler. Oh, Joan Fowler, yes. Yeah. And the other members of, um, you know, like the, the global teachers and leaders, um, and they all think very highly of Mariam. Mariam brought Eric Pearl to uh, do a presentation and a little teaching at my wellness center when I had it. Um, and he, he is a hoop. <laughs> he really funny. is. <laughs> yes. I always appreciate a globally recognized master healer who says, guys, we got to have fun. You know? He's yeah. just one of those people that you just have to meet, you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> very different from your average teacher i just sent you that email okay great great now um thank you i will load these while you talk a little bit about reconnective healing and i would like to tell everyone mariam is you know knows a lot of healing modalities uh including when i first started studying pranashakti mariam was studying with me so she's a certified pranashakti uh, a healer as well and um and you are good too oh, this is so beautiful <laughs> it was really fun to to do that um training with you bonita i i miss your wellness center <laughs> um reconnective healing is another modality of healing as bonita said and it's energy work and basically it is the interaction with the frequencies full spectrum of the frequencies of the reconnective healing which is energy light and information and by interacting with these one is just one goes into optimal health uh, the difference that i have seen in reconnective healing i've seen that with the other modalities that i have received um, is the fact that it is not technique oriented per se these frequencies are intelligent so at the time of the session basically the healer being the person who receives allows the frequencies to come through um, through the practitioner. So basically it's a three-way conversation between um, the healer, the receiver, and the grid, the universal grid that we have around us. And basically the idea being that one gets reconnected back to that grid. So it works on a very deep level. It works on the DNA level. And uh, a lot of times there are spontaneous healings that take place. Uh, a lot of times, you know, as you all know, energy healing works on different layers of the body. It's not necessarily the physical body. It works also on the emotional and the spiritual body as well. So depending on what you need at the time, that's what's going to happen. So if people are encouraged not to set up any expectations when they come into a session because they will limit what they receive. That's true. That's true. Um, and I've received uh, a little taste of reconnective healing from Mariam when we were goofing around once. You know what? Now that we are live streaming, it is not letting me post images here. So you guys, I'm going to post images when we, uh, when we're done because that's the only way it will you know i'll post a little album on my facebook page since you're on it that way you can see it but it's not going to be in the comments here until i guess after the live stream that's a little bit annoying but there you go that's life too <laughs> so mariam um The frequencies of these three modalities, the messages you receive, how you feel the connections of your work. Because we've here we have your beautiful uh, cosmic art, your soul angelic soul artwork. We have your work as a um, life coach, and which is like a lifestyle therapist, you know, on all levels. 
we have your work as an energetic healer. Can you tell us when you are receiving, like, is there any, um, are you just open and this is what flows? How do you create, okay, I'm in this modality and this is what flows, this is what, now I'm in this one? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, mm. when, I, when I do the energetic work, when it is just an energetic session, I'm super open and I call on ahead of time for whoever needs to come for the person I'm seeing. Because uh, since I open myself up completely, I do most of the time get visitations so that i have to say is the most because i am completely in that and perhaps the frequencies help with that but um it feels very different because i feel i feel them both um auditorily a couple of times i had visuals and and you know knowing me bonita you know how exciting that can be for me because it doesn't normally happen and i physically actually pick things up because um it's coming through me so i physically feel the feel energies and sometimes mm -hmm. i feel things you know through my hands my little antenna <laughs> at the moment um, i have sensitive. seen you when your hand is picking up a lot it can get uncomfortable for you sometimes yes it does actually ever since it's become an antenna it's it's been like that too um and the artwork, you know, puts me in a flow. So that's a different kind of frequency that I go on. And it's, it's more gentle and it's more subtle compared to the energy work. And when I'm coaching, I don't normally necessarily channel. I just, I'm intuitive, obviously, and I pick things up intuitively, but it is, um, the coaching is more, holding the, the space first and basically setting up energetically the space for the coaching to take place. And if need be, if I'm asked, if I, you know, like further inquiries are asked of me, then I, I dig in there. But for coaching, it's more like energetically holding that space. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. So you're also aware of what energy is flowing into you to flow through you. What energy is out there that stays out there that you are connecting with and what energy, like you're looking at not just, and what is in you that stays, what is in you that goes out, what is like out there that stays out there. Right. Right. Yeah. I, um, I'm very fond of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is something I um, learned a little bit of earlier on before my art therapy uh, graduate course. And um, it's, a, it's something that I use in my therapeutic sessions uh, when I use I mean, therapeutic interventions. However, it's something that's become sort of second nature to me. So that's really the the way I get to, I don't want to call, use the word reading people, but I can think of something better at the moment. So when I am engaging with a client, that's what helps me first. I try not to um, get all psychic on them because it's sort of inappropriate in my opinion, and, and it's not the place for that. And although I might be picking things up, it's not the place to, to do that unless, you know, I'm asked. Coaching is, is a different purpose. You know, it's empowerment, which is at least the kind that I do is based on empowerment and holding the space for you to come up with what works for you the best. So I, th I feel energetically um, keeping the space as, Mm, open as possible then that allows the client to get there on their own mm -hmm. that makes sense i mean that just shows why the coaching work you do has such an impact you know, yeah because um, it's about them it's not about me 
Yeah. That's, that's the main goal. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we have a question for you, which is all of this work that you're doing, can it be done, you know, over the phone, over uh, Zoom, yep. uh, and including this, the, the soul painting? I'm sorry, I may have coined you inappropriately, the cosmic art. <laughs> The spirit painting. That's perfectly okay. I, I call them angel paintings just because they are angels. Yeah. At the end of the day, when I turn them in, they, they are always angels. But it's mm. what I channel from you that it becomes the angel. So um, yes, I do everything. I can do everything online except one specific modality, which is a an advanced level in the reconnection uh, world, which is called the reconnection, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is done in person, done over two sessions, and it's a once in a lifetime experience. That is done in person. Everything else I can do virtually. Hmm. Yes. Um, and let's see, there is some interest in your paintings and your artwork. So, um, so we have a lot of comments here. Let's see. Um, looks like most of them are uh, people giving love and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Thank you. Now, <laughs> yes. Now, um, I just want to say uh, because also like today, I promised to everyone that I would do a multi-deck card reading. Oh yeah. And one of the reasons Mariam is here is because she agreed for me to do a card reading for her. Um, so we're going to go ahead with this. You see, I'm going to tilt down to my table. You see, I've got all my little decks here. And I'll adjust this so you can see the decks as I lay them out. But I love it when you do cards. When you don't. <laughs> I love I'm doing cards. Looking forward to this. <laughs> Thank you for being so brave oh, that anytime. you are letting me read for you on such a public platform. Uh, Carlos, uh, the medium, was here a few weeks ago. I watched that, yes. It was right, great. so you may have seen he started doing a reading on me, and I'm like, wait, 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 you're getting too <laughs> personal. <laughs> so as I was pulling the cards out, and I have here... Um, five decks, five decks that were, because we're going to do a multi-deck reading. I also have a few single decks if we need to pull a one-off card just to like check on something. Okay. Before I started, I pulled out this deck, the Druid. Aww. Oh, I love this deck. Oh my God. And so you guys, I'm not going to photograph here. Let me, whoops. <laughs> let me get, I, the, the camera's showing everything the opposite too, so I keep going in the wrong angle. But I, I'm not going to photograph any of these, just if there's anything you like, grab the image as I wave it. Just because last week I promised I'd photograph everything and I didn't photograph anything. So I pulled out this deck and I shuffled it and I said, what is one card that will help me with the direction of this? And one card came out. Mariam, you're going to love it. It's the fire dragon. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And you guys, Mariam is known for this amazing class she <laughs> teaches called the, the unicorn and the dragon. And it is like one of the best classes ever. And what is the card that I drew for her? <laughs> Mariam works with dragons. She is, she works with dragon energy. So I, I thought that I that was just like the best omen for today we could have asked for. <laughs> yeah, if Miriam could just go around and tell people that she's a witch, she would. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All things so, magical. That's, that's what I like. <laughs> exactly. So you guys, I'm going to, um, a multi-card, a multi-deck reading will go anywhere from three to five decks. And um, I have here five decks. I have the Doreen Virtue, Mermaids and Dolphins. 
um, I have a drawer with, I don't know, like I have like a hundred decks of cards. So I was letting the energy of the decks call to my hand. So I kind of spaced my eyes out and I let my hand sort of drift around. So I'm like, okay, whatever is under my hand, this one wants to come up. And um, so we have Kyle Gray, Angel Prayers. There we go. Wow. Right? <laughs> there. Um, no big surprise that angels wanted to be read for Mario. So, so far we have mermaids, angels, and dolphins. I love that. And then uh, Stephen Farmer, Earth Magic. This is a beautiful, okay. beautiful deck. Yes, wow. beautiful. Uh, we have Colette Baron reed The Wisdom of Avalon. This one came out. I like, I like that. Oh yeah, yeah, like King Arthur's Court, Avalon. I've Harry used that Potter. deck on, online with her, actually. Really? I mean, on her site, she has like, just pick a, pick a three thing. Oh, oh yeah. These decks, and I've, I always pick that one, <laughs> the Avalon <It's> so, one. <laughs> well, that's perfect because it wanted to be the first one. Now I know why. And then uh, the second one we're gonna do is Sandra Ann Taylor, Energy Oracle Cards. Wow. Yeah. So if you like any of these cards as we're reading, um, we're starting again with the Wisdom of Avalon. And as I said before, when I do a card reading, uh, you know, they always come with these, not always, but usually come with these handy dandy books that you can look up. But the point of doing a card reading is to, um, have it open the door so that you are getting intuitively, you're getting information. So I am knocking the deck to my heart. So because that's, uh, we're, we're setting the energy. Um, and Mariam, may I read for you? Absolutely. Okay. And this is good for all the cards that are coming up. Um, now, if we were in person, so I'm shuffling the cards, obviously we're not gonna play poker. So <laughs> the purpose of shuffling is I'm opening up, I'm like very grounded and I'm opening up my crown. I'm inviting Mariam's, I'm inviting Mariam's guides, whoever wishes to share messages. And I can tell, especially with getting that dragon, that this is gonna be a powerful reading and this is about her soul's work. It's not about like a job promotion or, you know, should she, uh, is her soulmate out there somewhere? <laughs> Don't tell your husband I said that. <laughs> Guys, I'm joking because Mariam's husband and she are soulmates. There's no question. Um, so I'm opening myself up to receive the messages. Even though Mariam is far away, the energy doesn't care if we're physically touching or not. And then I close my eyes or I space my eyes out and certain cards just jump out. I'm looking for three cards and I'm just like letting my fingers kind of do their thing until a card just jumps out into place. I'm gonna tilt this down and let's see if you guys can see it, okay. Um, so with a three, here, I'll bring, and you guys, well, I'll hold them up each one also. With a three card reading, we have the situation. Now this situation might be a troublesome one or it might be one that maybe is just ready for, to move forward. Like there's no moral judgment or emotional impact. It's just, this is the situation. The middle card is the path you then take to get to your desired outcome. So it could be you're in a rut. And if you do some process or some activity, you will end up in a much better place. Or it could be you have a project you've been ignoring and you do an activity. And this is what happens if you ever finish your project. That's a common situation for me. Like it could be any situation. 
So for the situation, we have the goblin, the wounded human ego. The wounded human ego. And the goblin is the situation. It's an adorable goblin. As you see, this is not a vicious one. The wounded human ego. And of course, as I'm talking with Mariam, I'm also opening up to say, you guys pick this, you're back to me. You guys pick this card, you know, you guided my hand. So what is this about? And what they're telling me and the energy I'm picking up from the card as well. So now I'm getting like messages this way and energy right here coming at me, almost like the card is speaking to me. Uh, what they're telling me is this is the time to stop holding back, to stop with like the, um, oh, shucks, I'm not all that stuff, you know, and release that because anytime we are holding back from embracing our potential, we are repressing ourselves and no one should be repressed. We may not do it intentionally. Um, it could even be, you know, it, there's any reason why we might be stopping ourselves from stepping into our glory. But I'm being told that your ego would like to be a little healthier and happier, that your ego is like just from dealing with life. You know, our egos get bruised just like a peach coming out of a, uh, coming out of a hail store. You know, that's how we get through life. That's the way it is. So it's time for you to honor everything that has like bruised the peach of your ego and release it so all those succulent juices can flow. That's the situation. But let's look at what is the path that they recommend. And we have the B, luck, industriousness, sweet victory. Look at that. So what they're recommending to step away from this is to honor your good luck, honor your accomplishments, live with like in a state of, of gratitude and excitement. Because when you are this way, when you are honoring everything good, there is no room to acknowledge anything less than good. And if you go on this path, the outcome, oh my God, the queen, oh. <laughs> woman, fertility, feminine power, sexuality, and friendships. Ooh. So it's about fully stepping into your power of the divine feminine. This is like such a powerful reading. It's amazing. Like, like the only thing you need to do in life to stand in your full glory as the queen is release whatever in you would like to be nurtured and released by honoring all that's resplendent within you. Wow. <laughs> yes. I needed this reading. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently you did. So here we have a three card reading and I'm, I'm like, well, this one was pretty like, wow, okay. Uh, so I'm going to say, well, thank you cards. This is a great message, but I want more details. So we're going to pull another deck, in this case, Energy Oracle. Wait, there we go. Energy Oracle. Such a beautiful deck. Like, and as I, as I said, like, I didn't even need to go and read the book because I'm letting the messages flow through me. So what I'm saying is this is a beautiful message, but you know how it is. The angels love to come and drop messages and then fly away. You know, things like, oh, well, if you're not happy with your situation, then find a situation you're happy with. Bye-bye. You're like, What? What that is like very useless divine information. <laughs> so, how about a little how, when, what, who, where? 
So that's what we're doing with the multi-deck. I'm saying, you know what cards? Thank you. This is a beautiful reading. And one that I think we could all globally, you know, appreciate for ourselves. But let's get more details. I want more details. So we take another deck and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for this beautiful message, lovely advice. Can you give us more detail on this? And then a little bit of shuffling. Ooh, the middle one is going to be two cards. Sometimes a single card is two cards. So your first card is going to give more details on the goblin, wounded human ego. So we're asking for more detail. Can you explain a little more? And what they're saying is the world. That's the card we get, the world. Okay. And I'm like, all right. Ego is of this world. All right. When you are with the divine, when you are in pure state, there's no ego. All of this stuff that we abuse ourselves with, it does not come from our pure self, from our true being. It comes from getting through life and having everyone out there in life tell us what we're supposed to be and where we've let them down and where we're not enough. And, you know, it's like all of that. It has nothing to do with being pure to yourself. Wounded ego comes from the world. It does not come from self. So we appreciate that reminder. We're like, okay, so how do we get to that? And they're saying luck, industriousness, sweet victory with the B is a path. Like give us a little more detail on, on this. And we have two cards. We have contract and door to personal healing and happiness. Okay. Wait, there. Contract and door to personal healing and happiness. They're saying your soul contract is to heal and be happy. That is the path. If you are honoring the work of your path, the work of your path is you are contracted to heal and be happy. Heal yourself, heal others. That is the contract. If you heal and you're not happy, you are not honoring your contract. So they're reminding you to be fully healed is to be so released from anything that holds one back that you're just happy, always finding your way back to joy. And if you do this, then you end up, as we have the queen, we have Archangel Uriel, the seventh chakra. Nice. And look, Look, she's got, it's a female Archangel Uriel. She's got a crown, very queen-like, and an angel. You know, she's shown up for me before. There you go. There you go. I know nothing about Uriel. She and I do not. I, I didn't before that either. I mean, I actually it is not one of the ones I normally work with, but she showed up um, years ago for, actually, it was a card reading, and she came up and I'd never heard of her before. So oh, she's been kind of on and off showing up for me now. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. She's showing up again. I should, um, so, I should uh, sort of study up on her a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> that is very interesting. And you guys, we came to the reading of the card and, um, and we're like, well, thank you. This is lovely but we want more detail. So far, it's a bit heavy handed. We want stuff that's actionable that Mariam can say, all right, I get it. 
and uh, we'll see if, I'm not sure if Earth Oracle will provide the answers that we're looking for, or if it'll just give an ambiance. Because this one is not the most powerhouse deck, but it's very soothing. And I feel like after that hardcore message, maybe a little balm. Okay, we'll see what Mr. Stephen Farmer has to say to us. So the first card was two cards. <laughs> so again, we're like, the situation is wounded ego, right? And they're talking about what causes wounded ego is our place in the world. So what we got is two cards, perspective, effortless. <laughs> Which is so perfect. Because if we're letting the world out there tell us who and what we are, we're always going to be filled with wounds. That's just the way it is. But if we let our perspective, you know, the, the, there it is, the other side of it. Look at this. It's a Milky Way galaxy spiral and a lovely waterfall, right? Yeah. Like the two coming together, it's like the, the root chakra and the crown chakra. It's cosmic and earth. It's divine energy, you know, from source and the angels and it's earth energy, you know, with Gaiac magic. If you are in the flow of this, then this becomes, the world becomes an experience, not the creator of who you are. So they, they want to remind you of this, that the goblin is born from huh, too much world and not enough divine effortless perspective. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at holding things up to the camera. And again, you know, Mariam, I have a feeling that they're using you a little bit as like the conduit for all of us. Because I know as we're getting these messages, I feel how powerfully they, they mean to me. And I think everyone who's here is going to be... Uh... So the path... We said, okay, so if we go forward with the B, thinking about our good luck, our sweet victories, focusing on moving ever forward with mm -hmm. industrious effort, but in a very positive attitude. And they said, you know, and this is, uh, helps, reminds us that your, our contract is to heal and be happy and to bring heal, healing and happiness. What comes from that is release, release. Oh, autumn, my favorite season. Yeah, that's when all the leaves fall and the new cycle begins, right? It is the end of the old cycle preparation, the beginning of the new cycle, because you release all the stuff that no longer serves so that you can go forward towards abundance and let's see what we're going to go forward to and that's interesting stone people vigilance i'm gonna to have to look that one up i'm gonna to have to look that one up and see what they mean by that because that one is just like a what <laughs> These stone people stand in their ever-present vigil along the shores of an ocean whose tide has receded, leaving the remnants of water upon which we can see them reflected. The sky, a soft and mobile backdrop for these solid beings, suggests peace and calm. They exude power, only moved and shaped by other earth elements, such as the sea, wind, and earth herself when she rumbles her belly. With practice, we can not only emulate these stone people, but also respect their ancestors. No, their, their ancientness and relative absoluteness of strength, 
They stand tall, bearing the ragged lines. Ooh, I don't want that. <laughs> bearing the ragged lines where the these other earth elements have carved their impressions in these otherwise seemingly immobile fortresses. Long past when we've left the earth for the world of spirit, these ancient beings will remain witness to all that transpires before their bodies. That is amazing. When you read this kind of reading, you are reading this way, but you're also reading this way, right? So, so left we want to right and up to down. And then we're also reading this way. Here's the situation and the ultimate outcome. But if we look at the queen combined with um, Ariel, the angel, and then they're bringing the stone people, the power, the basically long living power and the earth connection. What also strikes me is we have on this side, the Milky Way and the waterfall, cosmic and earth as one. And here we have, you know, angelic and earth form the queen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see that. So, yeah. He said, I don't work with this deck a lot just because uh, Stephen Farmer confuses me, but... <laughs> Well, you know, Juanita, it's interesting. I it just, if I may say something, please do. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned um, the seventh chakra and then the root, which are the two chakras that work together. Actually, the these are all a reflection of that, because That's so interesting. Because the, it's the stone. The, the, what can be more grounding than that? That's root, and then the angelic, which is your crown all the way up to the light of the universe or whatever and that's the crown connection so it's all like a the cards reflect that that's very interesting that's very At least that's what i saw yeah that's what i see too yeah. Yeah. yeah and you know haven't we just spent a half hour talking about how you are brilliant with receiving and flowing so that's i'm not surprised so now we're going to uh doreen virtue dolphin and mermaid yeah i actually have this deck i love this deck i yeah, mean connection with dolphins and i have a mermaid actually <laughs> okay so this one just popped out so that's All your right. first card sometimes they don't wait <laughs> Oh, and other two cards for the middle and two cards for the end. Okay. Oh, wow. Dolphins and mermaids got a lot to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So again, with the goblin card, we're asking for more clarification. What we came up with is father healing. Your personal power increases as you give any father related issues to heaven. So this is not okay. just about, um, you know, father, like in the 3D. You're moving towards here, let me move this down, working with the divine feminine. So release all the divine masculine stuff to the heavens and let your energy flow to where it's being called. Wow. Yeah. That makes total sense to me. I am so glad to hear that. <laughs> And then, oh my God, I love this. So going on your path with industriousness, and so going on your path with industriousness, understand that your soul contract, you know, gives detail of healing and happiness while being industrious and full of gratitude, which gives you the release of everything you don't need. We're like, what don't you need? All the things you don't need, just give to the Divine Father because you don't need it. And then for the path card here, they're saying, dream big, let go of small thoughts about yourself, see yourself succeeding, coupled with, so this is card one, coupled with 
you and your loved ones and your possessions are safe and protected by heaven. Protection. Wow. If you dream big in a very positive, self-loving way, you will be protected. So you release all you don't need and release your fear. When we're all done with this, I will photograph this because this is so powerful. And where does that take you? We already have, you know, the queen, Archangel Uriel, coupled with the stone people. <laughs> this is great. It takes you to uh, divine magic. Extra magical energy surrounds your situation right now. Expect miracles. Thank you very much. <laughs> and tranquility. Make time to relax, be still, and enjoy your solitude, enjoying in much needed self-care. So these two are coupled together. So you will be protected with your big dreams of creating very divine magic in a tranquil situation. Look at that. So we're getting a lot of cards wow. here running down. There we go. And we're going to wrap it up with Kyle Gray's Angel Prayer. I love this deck. Kyle Gray is another one just like, like you. He's a brilliant, intuitive artist. That's wonderful. Your voice um, comes and goes. Oh. Okay. Is it there now? Much better. Yeah. Okay. I guess when I tilt the screen for some reason, even though I have my microphone clipped on, I don't know. You just felt a little bit mm, muted, you know what I mean? Like as if you're underwater. <laughs> okay, card one. Card two. Card three. And you know, as many times as I've done card readings, there's always a little part of me that's like, Oh my God, I hope I get the right card for this person. Every time, every time I draw a card, I'm like, oh, I hope it's the right card for this person. And it's always the right card. Okay, so for your path, and let me know if I if my voice disappears again. Okay. So we're going from the goblin and releasing the world so that we can have a grand perspective, effortless perspective, give all of our issues to father healing and this takes us to a point of we get signs from heaven thank you heaven for sending me reminders of your presence this is how your situation transforms so as i said when we read the cards we're reading them this way but also this way so Mariam has the ability, we all do, to go from being like that wounded peach, letting our ego feel hurt because the world is giving us issues, to saying, you know what, we're going to align with, with our true self, give everything we don't need to the Divine Father, and that gives us a situation now where we are getting signs from heaven. So that simple action transforms us in such a way. And let me move these up a bit there. Um, there we go. So the middle card now, which is about taking action uh and honoring our soul contracts takes us to a point where we if we dream big we are protected and the original middle card now transforms 
change and transition, Archangel Azriel. Thank you, Azriel, your, for leading me safely. Your voice is going. Change and transition. Okay. Change and transition. Thank you, Azriel, for leading me safely through this change. So this is the transformation that your action takes. Instead of just having to worry about, oh, ignore you know, the wounded ego and just try to feel good about yourself, if you apply the lessons we learned, then the action transforms to acknowledging the fact that you are in transition with gratitude. And remember, now you're receiving signs from heaven not from your wounded ego. And this takes us to, oh my God, it's another beautiful queen, studying and learning. Thank you angels for allowing me to see that every day is a learning day. And look at this beautiful- Your voice. There. Is this any better? Yeah. Okay. Look at this beautiful angel, yeah. studying and learning. And she's got like all this great stuff written over her head of like mathematical downloads and equations and stuff. So there we go. <laughs> that is a basic multi-deck reading. That was very comprehensive. Wow. <laughs> yes. And keep in mind, we now, if we go from the top corner to the bottom corner, we go from a wounded goblin to thank you angels for helping me always evolve and learn. So that's a transformation that is open to, open to Mariam and open to all of us. Because again, this is a situation that we all of us get to uh, wrap, wrap with in our lives. Um, now, if you wanted to make it even more of a reading, you can go to the original deck, which is the uh, Wisdom of Avalon, and take the top card and ask, it gives you a special message. The Earth Fairy, physical health, grounding, and foundations. All of this comes to your ability to manage physical health, grounding, and your foundation. That's the point of origin of the whole reading. And that is what your issue is, or the, um, that is the subject that brings up the wounded goblin. So, now we are going to take this physical health grounding and foundation and let it transform into a joyous angel who gets to learn all the time. That's an Akashic angel if ever I saw one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in a multi-card deck reading, I have done multi-card readings that actually go on for like 10, 12, 15 decks. Wow. And we end up with things on this side. And then we pull out like a single card. Um, say, okay, you know what? We just want a little like, what the heck is going on here? So this is your uh, DNA activation deck. And what they're saying is the life force energy is constantly moving. It is the dance of life that raises our vibration ever higher. This strand of DNA engages in every cell of your body with the dance of life. So, so as we're, I know, I thought that's beautiful. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh-huh. Um, when somebody comes to you for the card reading, do you decide whether it's a multi uh, deck you know, reading or do they request that? Um, a lot of times I'm guided into what kind of reading a person needs, also the situation they bring to me. 
sometimes what they need is a tarot reading, which I do not do because tarot is way too hard uh, to learn. But I can do like a shaman reading. Sometimes um, if someone comes to me for a reading, we'll actually do several different readings and we'll find though the same thing is always coming up. So they tell you what the issue is? Sometimes they tell you or no? Okay. The cards tell me. Okay. I've had people come to me. They're not going to tell me anything. They're like, if you're the real deal, you'll bring it up. And I lay down the cards and I tell them, here's the situation. They'll be like, no, you got it wrong. No. I'm like, I'm telling you the cards are right. So you're blocking something. And then I keep pulling out the cards, keep like, you know, for those people, I'll get like 10, 12, 13. And I'm like, look at this. It is the same message again and again and again. And they'll go, well, yeah, but I already know all about that. And they're like, I came in for this other reason. And I'm like, well, obviously that other reason is irrelevant and you're just wasting your time. What is it? And then they'll tell me the other reason. I'm like, that is totally irrelevant. That has nothing to do with your purpose in life. You know, you're just like focusing on that to avoid focusing on why you're here. And then they're like, oh, you guys are crying. You're so right. You know, usually in that situation, it's like a woman who has a sense of purpose, but she's got some guy she likes and should she focus on the guy instead of her purpose right. yeah um no there are times someone comes to me for a reading and i'm pulling out the runes i'm pulling out the pendulum pulling out the chumpy stones pulling out the i ching like the whole nine yards and they'll sometimes they'll still deny the message i'm like i'm sorry i don't know what to tell you we keep coming up with the same message so it, it's nice to read for someone so receptive. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. I love doing card readings. I love it. It's one of my favorite things, and I don't get to do it often. So that's You're very good. Um, well, thank you, Trinette, for your uh, compliment. Yeah, you know, one reason I use multiple decks is if you're using the same deck, if they're trying to give variations or details on the same message, you may just run out of cards. So I'll use multiple decks. Sometimes I'll go back into an original deck, shuffle a little more and get more detail on that. So three cards across could well end up five, seven, nine cards across on each row. Um, if I feel like we're not getting enough information on one row, I'll go in and pull more cards and see what other details there are. It's important to play with it and not feel like you have to be stuck on any one, you know, dynamic formula. Um, and sometimes, like, like I said, sometimes I'll pull a deck out and we're like, this deck it doesn't feel like it's working for us. We'll just pick it up, put it on the side, pull out another deck. You know, if you're like, if your heart is not radiating, then maybe that deck is not for this reading. Um, yeah. So that is card reading 101. <laughs> And the big thing is play with it. If any of you have studied angel card reading, it's the same. It's the same spirit card reading, angel card reading. It's the same style of reading my grandmother taught me when I was a little girl, you know, although we didn't have all these fancy decks back then, but it's the same. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's quarter after eight. Um, before we run out of time, we're gonna do a little self-promoting to you guys. And um, so I just wanna say, Mariam, you are available, you're not teaching classes right now, but you are available for consulting, is that correct? Yes, yes, I'm co I am coaching and I do the healings. I mean, I'm, like I said, I can do any of these virtually. So 
feel free to contact me. The consultation is free. So you can ask questions, more specific questions, if you have them. And I posted your website, The Core Shift, uh, here in the comments. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I love the name, The Core Shift. Can you tell us about why you named your business that? You know, it's funny. It kind of came to me, that name. I was struggling with the name and I um, was trying, I think, too hard with my mind logically coming up with something. And I just, you know, I got frustrated and I let it go for a while. And all of a sudden, you know, this, um, the idea of shift came to me and then it just kind of like named itself. <laughs> it did. <laughs> so core shift was taken. So I added the V. I like that. And, um, and guys, I'm putting links to my two coming events uh, this Saturday morning. Of course, I'll be teaching how to become the master of your energy field. We are working on Crown Chakra this Saturday morning, 11 a.m. And that is my free live stream, 11 to 12, 1230. And then Saturday um, at three o'clock starting this Saturday and then every Saturday after on my website. And I'm also putting the info here. I will be channeling the Akashic Record librarians. I put um, the little recording of last night's event. Um, Mariam and I are in the same, we have a meditation group we've been members of for a while a long time <laughs> years and years and years <laughs> and um they let me channel for them last night just to like help me get ready for saturday so i have the recording of that um the librarians are anxious to come and share information to help all of us step into our place just as these cards were saying even our place to uh, help heal the planet. Um, last night they were talking about concepts of time. <laughs> and I'll admit some of that's right over my head. The librarians may use- If I may put a plug in, if, if you guys have not heard or seen Bonita channel, I highly, highly recommend it. It is always great information and I encourage you to sign up for that. Thank you. Yeah, Mariam, you've been around like uh, from the pretty much the beginning of me learning to channel. Yes, I'm proud yeah. to say I have been <laughs> and you have blossomed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I have the link here for, for that as well. Yeah, I'm really excited. I love of every, anyone who has taken over my body. The librarians, they're my heart. I love them so much. But you also do uh, Mary Magdalene and Master Jesus as well. So yeah, they're cool. They're fun. They're fun. Um, and yeah, and I've channeled... Um, a few, like I'm, I'm in what's called an open channel. So I open up and invite, invite anyone of the frequency that is, um, you know, benevolent enough. They have to have a high frequency for love and caring to open. But then I have to be able to align my energy with their energy. And sometimes, um, you know, like the librarians, it's so easy, so fluid. Some of the others, it, it'll be a one-off because they have a message to share and they're like, she's too much work and they go to someone else. <laughs> the Palladians. <laughs> I stress them out. <laughs> well, you're probably, you're, you're from a higher part of the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's just a frequency. It's like trying to sing soprano if you're a natural alto, you know? Right. It, it's just the, the matching of the frequency. 
Yeah. Um, so that's this Saturday. I got a double hitter. We're going to work on our crown chakra. And then what's super cool about the librarians is whenever I channel them, they want anyone who wants to connect with them directly. So if you join Saturday morning for the crown chakra class, and then you join with the live, which that, that one is free. The librarians, it's like $20. It's not much for the channeling. Your crown is ready for them to come and chat directly with you while I'm channeling. So that, that's awesome. Uh, they're hoping that will happen. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I signed up for that. Oh, good, good. Yes, I look forward to sharing this with you. Thank you. Um, so thank you. And I see we have a lot of nice comments. And um, I'm so glad we shared this information with you guys. Um, next week, um, I'm going to teach you guys how to do uh, um, a shaman read a shaman deck reading shaman card reading. Uh, I am not a shaman, but I've worked with a lot of shamans and um, the from, you know, for many years I've been doing shaman card readings. It's a slightly or medicine card, you might call it medicine card. Uh, it's a slightly different style to what we did. It's very interesting. And then the following week, I'm going to get someone to sh talk to all of us about tarot. Um, I have received tarot. I have friends to do tarot. I do not do tarot. Again, it requires way too much study. It's such a craft. Um, Mariam, you recently have been doing, what, what is it that you've recently learned to do um, that you said is with the Right. Um, the tarot, in my understanding, I don't do tarot readings either. I um, have also received a reading. However, I have come to understand that um, tarot um, cards are, um, how should I put that? They are connected to the tree of life, which is a part of the Kabbalah um, teachings and they are basically the pathways if you know how the tree of life is set up there are these energy centers that are connected by pathways and the tarot are the pathways the the principles of the tarot are the pathways that connect basically the branches together and um it's was very interesting because each tarot is a representation of what we are so they're all very intuitive and vibrationally tuned complicated yeah. stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah this was yeah. a very very uh, short summary of of what they are oh yeah yeah no, it's, it's powerful stuff um and then after tarot, we'll move on to some other modality. <laughs> Fun things. Yeah. But Mariam, thank you so much for spending your evening with us. Oh, thank you. It was my pleasure. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> this was really nice. Um, and like I said, I'll photograph the cards and I'll email it to you, Mariam, and I'll also post it in the comments. Okay. That's a lot of cards. <laughs> I could relate to every single one. I am so glad to hear that. Yes, yes. I related to the message. I related to every card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, have a wonderful night. Love yourself. Be kind to yourself. And um, we will see you around here soon. Um, Mariam, stay on Zoom for a second. And okay. Love you guys. I love you so much. Um, just treat yourselves beautifully tonight. <laughs> All right. Bye.